No, I won't toe the party line. Long live free speech. Long live independent thinking. Welcome to Tarela News, where we examine the latest political and cultural news from the perspective of a new communitarianism, where we set out to start again and rebuild the institutions that make our social fabric stronger. Subscribe if you are interested. Let's be honest here. I have never liked AOC. Even if she has some good policy positions, her whole divisive attitude makes achieving these policies much more difficult. Up until now. I have not been too vocal about this because some people, including some of my friends, really like AOC, and I didn't want to start a pointless argument with them. But in AOC's latest wipe at Tulsi Gabbard, I think she has shown the level of her, her immaturity, and therefore I think this is a good opportunity to clarify once and for all why I can't believe in AOC. Let me explain. The whole drama started with. The congressional vote to impeach President Trump. Tulsi Gabbard was the only member of the House to vote present in that vote. That is, she refused to vote either yes or no. This decision was certainly controversially received, and many people on both sides voiced their disappointment at her choice. Still, whether you agree with her or not, it is clear that she acted out of her own conscience, and she has also clearly explained the reasons for her decision. Her actions not only fulfill the responsibility of a member of Congress; they are also befitting of a good leader. Furthermore, Tulsi's decision is also based on her long-standing concern that the political process is fracturing American society, something any good leader should be very concerned about. Indeed, Andrew Yang voiced similar concern about the divided state of American society during the latest debate, when he addressed the impeachment issue. AOC, on the other hand, never seems to have any concern about divisiveness. Indeed, she wasted no time in taking a swipe at Tulsi's decision, essentially saying that people should either vote yes or vote no. My view is that this is no different than forcing people to take a side, which is part of a wider attitude of you are either with us or against us. The point is, it is okay to disagree with Tulsi's decision. But everyone should recognize that it comes from a place of genuine concern, and therefore be able to respect her decision. Forcing someone to take a side, dismissing their decision of conscience, would be very disrespectful and immature indeed. Once upon a time, this "you are either with us or against us" attitude was very common among the warmongering neoconservatives on the right, and this was. Perfectly exemplified in President George W. Bush, this attitude was one reason why the neoconservatives became very unpopular across the board, and were eventually first driven out of power by Obama, and then driven out of mainstream politics altogether by Trump. Sadly, some parts of the left apparently want to follow the footsteps of the now irrelevant neocons. Furthermore. Taking such a tribalist approach to politics shows that one is in it to consolidate one's identity rather than to truly help improve things. It's basically turning all politics into identity politics, which is certainly quite regressive. What everyone should remember is that there's nothing constructive or progressive about us versus them style divisiveness, which is why the criticism of AOC looks really immature next to the broad tent, respectful approach of Tulsi Gabbard. Maybe if AOC learns a few lessons along the way, maybe, just maybe, she will come to appreciate Tulsi's approach in ten years' time. That's all for today. I'll be back next time to discuss another big idea. Subscribe if you want to follow our story. The transcripts are available on the internet. And remember to resist the hive mind and stay individualistic. The world depends on it.